fed up with hidden fees? What does APF mean? Attractions promotions. In Canada's top tourist spot, they come with different names and different prices. Niagara Falls destination fees. Business administration, industrial fee. We reveal where the money's really going. It's going to the owner of the property, to the operator of that property. Wow, just to make money off of a tourist. That's crazy. 12%, oh my god. They're making a living, man, out of us. Is this the transparency you want? And when it comes to some gift cards you're giving, why do they keep on taking? Monthly maintenance fee. $3 per month starts 12 months after activation. I don't understand the value that a consumer gets from locking their money up in one of these cards. Plus, an honest to goodness charge that seems anything but. If they're going to charge 3%, I'm probably never going back. What the fee starts now. We're getting wired up. And now turn to me investigating some sneaky fees you might see at many hotels, restaurants, and attractions in Canada's most popular tourist destination. What do you think that is? Tourist uh, tax. Tourist tax. tourist tax. OK, where's that go? No clue. Many think they're collected by government. You know what that is? No, I was um, assuming if there's taxes here. Yeah. Think again. Are you familiar with NFDF? No, I'm not. So is it like gratuity? Nope. Wow. Yeah. What is this daily mandatory charge? Oh, it's like what they're charging us for. To clear up the confusion, we're checking out a dozen hotspots to see how the mysterious fees are explained. First, the days in. And then you got something called GMC. That's the daily mandatory charge. I mean, like the charges. At the Radisson, it's called a resort fee. That is more of an environmental fee. Oh, so it just stays in the hotel? Oh, no, it pays to recycle. At the Oaks Hotel, they call it a daily levy. The daily hotel levy? What is that for? One of the part of this, uh, it's also participating in the recycling program. Different names, different explanations, but across the popular Falls View district, one thing we do hear a lot. All of these uh, fees and levies are mandatory. So you can't take them no, off? We, we can't break. OK. It didn't used to be that way. Back in 2015, customers could say no to the added cost at many places. Cheers. Cheers. Is that, that's mandatory tax? Um, it's not mandatory. We know because we've been following the fees for nearly a decade. What's a DPF? It's the Destination Productivity Tax in Niagara Falls. Back then, it was typically a 3% add-on. In 2016, it increased. But you guys charge how much? 5%. 5%. Then in 2017... How much is it? It's 10%. At the time, Niagara Falls Mayor Jim Diodati told us he knew it was a problem. I wholeheartedly support a more transparent, uh, more accountable um, way of dealing with this. I think definitely it's confusing to people. Not long after, they try to solve the problem by introducing an official municipal accommodation tax, or MAT, $2 per night at hotels with funds going to the Niagara Falls Hotel Association to promote tourism. Today I'm taking you up 520 feet 52 seconds. But now we're hearing those tourism fees. Here you go, enjoy your visit are being added on top of that tax. So we're going in to see where things stand now, starting with the Skylawn Tower, where they charge something called an APF. What does APF mean? Attractions promotion fee. Attractions promotional fee. And who does it who does it go to? So they pay for their type of oh, yeah, yeah. It's an extra 3% here. Over at TGI Fridays, no mention on their menu, but a surprise on the bill. Yep, Niagara Falls destination fee. Here, it's called the NFDF. What's that? They add that uh, to the bills at restaurants and hotels down in this area. That goes towards like uh, improving the tourist experience. It's not going to any of us, I'll tell you that. At the International House of Pancakes, the fee shows up again. How much is this? Like, for just 10%. And this employee lets us in on a little secret. 
Pretty sure we're actually supposed to come from the human character. Legally, I don't think it does sound. Say you're going from the city, like maintenance, fireworks, and stuff like that. Over and over, we hear the fees go towards city upkeep, the falls, and the fireworks. Most of our stuff, like the convention center, uh, the new concert venue that's attached to the it's a lot of that. But where's the money really going? It's going to the owner of the property, to the operator of that property. Janice Thompson is the CEO of Niagara Falls Tourism. Here's something called an NFDF of 10%, an additional $8. Um, where does that money go? To the operation of the, of the property. But that's not what we're being told at most of the places we visit, including Applebee's. What's the B-A? It's a tourist tax. So it's business administrative. Yeah, industrial fee, I think it says. What is it? Basically for like the fireworks, the lights are going on, all this stuff. Do you know what percentage that is? 8%. Slick marketing or sneaky practice? We head to Baltimore to get an expert's take. To me, I think it's clearly deceptive. Andrew Ching is a professor of marketing and economics at Johns Hopkins Carey Business School. In Niagara Falls, we've been tracking this for years. Not only do the extra fees get added onto places, but the percentage being charged is going up. This is an interesting point because this is the tourist place. Most of the people just go there every once in a while. Uh, maybe once every few years. And these people may not really notice this change of this fee. Do you think that's fair when you have staff saying one thing, when you have names like tourist improvement fee, but it's actually just revenue for the business? That's obviously not, it's not fair, it's not right. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I would say this is very problematic. At both the Embassy Suites Hotel and Four Points by Sheraton, they acknowledge the money collected stays with the business. So up with the maintenance and the hotel and all the cleaning supplies and everything like that. At the embassy, it's an extra 12%, the highest we've seen. We're also being told the other charges are mandatory, that we don't have a choice. That's correct, they, because they are part of the, the fee that's charged by the operation. But it didn't used to be like that. Well, <laughs> Life changes, that's all I can say. I guess business changes, costs go up. A big surprise to the tourists we talk to. Where does that 10% go away? The business gets to keep it. Wow, just to make money off of tourists. That's crazy. 12%, oh my god. They're making a living, man. Out of pups. I've never heard of that. Like people come here to gamble, it's a bit of a roulette with the prices of what you're gonna pay. Totally. We could pick three places. One doesn't charge it at all. One charges 10%, one charges 12%. Wow. That's insane. That's crazy. These tourists aren't alone. Many employees at these restaurants agree. Check out Starbucks. What's the TIF? Obligatory um, tax. People ask about it a lot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's like stealing money from people, but it's legal. Because you're in the area. <laughs> Others, including those at Outback Steakhouse, offer to remove the fee when we ask about it. Did they say it's mandatory? It's supposed to be. I think it's a little silly that they make people pay that, but it's just really. Me. Finally, we visit Milestones for a meal. Here, it's called a luxury fee. Oh, the total cash drop. I hate it when people ask me that. I just cringe every time, and I'm totally honest about it, because that's what it is. Where do you think it's Tourist going? tax. Right. They say it pays for the fireworks and stuff like that, but we don't even have fireworks right now. It's absolute nonsense. I always joke that it should be called the BS instead of the L. Because it's, we have, like, look at all the taxes that are on here already. Oh, yeah. It's insane. It's literally a tourist tax. Which is insulting, because the places are jacked up in tourist areas everywhere already. And then she says something we aren't expecting. They've had this on Marketplace, on CBC, and they've covered it. We've been following this story for a few years now, and it seems as though things have gone from bad to worse. When we talked to Niagara Falls mayor about the fees in 2017, he agreed change was needed. I wholeheartedly support a more transparent, uh, more accountable um, way of dealing with this. Now, we're back to meet Jim Diodati. Back in 2017, you said you supported a more transparent and accountable approach. 
Do you think that's happened? Yeah, well, we at that time didn't have an accommodation tax in town, and since then we now do. And it's a transparent process that we audit regularly and, and use those monies to market the destination. And yet the fees that previously existed still exist and in many cases have gone higher. Does that make sense to you? Well, <laughs> I mean, no one likes to pay fees and no one likes to pay taxes. That's one thing I know. Certainly in the hospitality industry, it's not a surprise because they'll send you your bill in advance. So there should be an awful lot of transparency where you can decide at this point, no, I don't think I want to do that or I want to dispute these fees or I accept that's part of the cost of coming here. I'm just going to pull some of the bills here. While hotels typically let customers know about the fees in advance, Diodati disagrees with other businesses which tack it onto the bill without warning. If you see where it is, you know, it's right below tax. There's something called NFDF that adds another 10%. This one, different name, BIAF, charges 8%. Here's one charging 8% and they call it a TIF. It goes by a lot of different names, but it's right there beside tax. Is it a problem the way that it's showing up? Is this the transparency you want? No, I don't think that's a good idea. And, and myself, having been a small business owner for 25 years, I can tell you that your reputation is the most important thing that you have. And I don't think it's a good idea. Diodati says the city has no control over these fees. It has nothing to do with the city. We don't see any of it. We don't uh, regulate it, legislate it, oversee it. But the province does. Ministry of Public and Business Service Delivery, and that would be the group that should be having a look at that. But what would you have them do? I would hope that they'd investigate to find out, first of all, if it's allowed, if it's legal, and, and the question is if it's a good idea. So we ask Ontario's Ministry of Public and Business Service Delivery. They direct us to the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, who direct us right back. Finally, we're told businesses can collect fees, but need to be transparent. And any misrepresentation about the purpose of a fee may be illegal. We reach out to all the businesses to let them know about our findings, but a lot of them don't get back to us. It is important that they know what we're going to report, so we're dropping off letters at each of them. I'm David with CBC Marketplace. We okay. typically put this into the hands of a manager it's related to the extra fees that get charged to uh, specific to Niagara Falls. Oh, okay. Like, it's a letter to the general manager. Okay. okay. I, I work for CBC Marketplace. Okay. It's yeah. related to the luxury fee, which I believe is 6%. So okay. I work with CBC. Okay. It's just about the, 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 the NFDF fee that gets added. I figured we heard about it. it. Yeah. Of the 12 places we visit, some send us statements. Days in, Milestones, Embassy Suites, and Starbucks tell us they don't control the pricing. Charging those extra fees is unique to the independently operated locations in Niagara Falls. The Radisson tells us their 4% resort fee is on the low end compared to their competitors and goes towards amenities guests can enjoy while staying at their property and not an environmental fee as we were told. They say they're working with staff to ensure the messaging is clear moving forward. Every few years, we come back here, we find the fees are on more places, that they become mandatory, that they're more expensive, and we hear from somebody like you saying, well, the province should do something about this. How do I know I'm not just coming back here in four or five years to talk about the same thing with the same answers? Well, the, the unique thing here is we're just rebounding from COVID. So we've been shut, we've been shut down. So everyone's scrambling to get back on their feet, but definitely it's something as they're getting on their feet, we're gonna have to talk about, and I'm not gonna wait until that time, I'd like to speak with the province now. What do you say to those tourists who feel they've been duped? I always tell people, first off, is make sure buyer beware. And, and if it's on a hotel bill, you should have received an email confirmation. You should have read it, right? Do your diligence, do your homework, right? And, and on rest. If it's not there? Well, then you don't have to pay it. You can't tell them after the fact. You've got to be open and transparent. You've heard what the mayor thinks. Now listen up to what these tourists think. I just don't think that it's right, or at least let people know, you know, beforehand. It's like bad for business. It's not transparent. So, and it, it would change where we go, especially if we're going to pay an arbitrary $23 a day to stay somewhere. Businesses should know that they, they cannot charge people and they, 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 they just cannot charge like that. Every, everyone should be aware. Well, this is a very good thing I got to know today and for sure I'm gonna- You're gonna start looking for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Coming up, is that gift card costing more than you think? 
this is not cool. And an extra $3 if I don't use it, that's a rip off. This is your marketplace. We're putting shoppers to the test. Gift card, do you ever use them? I have used them before, yeah. Give them, get them. I've given them, I've gotten them. Ever get gift cards? Yeah, out okay. of time. Giving plastic is popular these days, but are all gift cards created equal? You ever buy these? Of course, yes. Yep. Actually, I get them as gifts more. Just before the pandemic, Sam Rustin gets a Visa gift card worth $75. I wanted to save it just because I knew gift cards don't run out and I wanted it for when I would need it. Is that an example of what you got? Yeah, this is what I got, essentially, with $75 put on it. It has the Visa mark, but the company has little to do with this product. It's called the perfect gift, but Sam discovers it's anything but. Monthly maintenance fee, $3 per month, starts 12 months after activation. She calls the number on the card and discovers her balance is gone. I was in shock for a few seconds because I, I, I had no idea that that was even a thing that happened, especially on gift cards. In Ontario, store-specific gift cards don't have such fees, but these ones play by different rules. To find out why, meet Jonathan Schachter. What made you want to get into the kind of law that is there to protect consumers? Uh, marketplace played a role, I'll be honest. Really? Yeah. Yep. He's a consumer protection lawyer who's filed class action lawsuits on similar gift cards. Around 2014, federal rules came into force for companies that issue cards and are federally regulated. Things like banks. Like banks or loan companies. And those companies under these new rules federally are allowed to charge certain fees. And if you take a closer look at the card, it's issued by the People's Trust Company. I don't love these products. I don't understand the value that a consumer gets from locking their money up in one of these cards and having the money gradually taken away from them. Sam's not giving up. She calls up the company to find out more about the fee. We will be deducting the $3 after 12 months of inactivity in the account to keep the car active. But, um, I'm so sorry. The reason these fees are deducted is because there are costs associated with the account maintaining. The company behind these cards is the People's Group. They tell us the monthly maintenance fee helps support the cost of operating the network, card processing, customer service, and other costs. They add they follow the rules by disclosing the fees right on the package and that they only start charging 12 months after activation. We share that news with shoppers. How would you like it if someone gave you a $100 gift card? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. What if that card started to go down in value after a year, even though you hadn't spent anything? Not very good. I don't like it. What if you get it, you never use it, and then it's gone? Yeah. You know, that's kind of wild. Well, what's your message to a company that would do something like that? My message? Cut it out. This is not cool. And an extra $3 if I don't use it, that's a ripoff. Schachter agrees, and he's got some advice. Vote with your feet. Don't buy the cards. If you're, or, you know, if you're, if you're buying it, if you want to give someone a gift and you don't know what you want to get them, give them cash. You, you might lose it in the couch, but you'll find it later and it'll keep its value. Coming up, it's called the honest to goodness fee, but. I hate the word honest in that, quite frankly, because it's not. <laughs> Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. We're going out for dinner, checking out Chuck's Roadhouse Bar and Grill. Two, please. Two, 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 guys. All right. With over 60 locations in Ontario, the company promises good food at affordable prices. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Price the way it used to be. Gail Etherington takes issue with their pricing model. It's right here. Honest to goodness fee, 3%. $1.48. 
On a recent trip to Chuck's in Napanee, Ontario, she notices that 3% fee. When I asked the waitress what that was about, she said that was to ensure that you're getting fresh, quality food. So I said, what, would you well, get what was you... I getting before? <laughs> anyway, I just said to her, you know what, I'm not paying that. It's explained on their menu and on their website. Something has to give and we definitely don't want that to be our quality. So it sounds like this is the way that they want to maintain the quality. Marketing professor Andrew Ching says that extra charge is bad for business. The most honest way, if you want to raise the price by 3%, just change your menu, increase it by 3%. Uh, why do you have to add another item? I'm not really sure, you know, what this restaurant is really thinking. Gail complains and gets the fee taken off. And when she came back, she said, OK, he'll take it off, but he won't do it next time. And so I said, there won't be a next time. Like, I hate the word honest in that, quite frankly, because it's not. <laughs> the owner of Chuck's Roadhouse is the Obsidian Group. They say they've always been transparent about the fee and that charging that extra 3% allows them to provide the highest quality food at the lowest possible prices while operating efficiently. I'm, I'm sort of a person of principle. It's not the amount. It's the principle, and if they're going to charge 3%, I'm probably never going back.